Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chechism, or just call me Mike. I think it's easier to pronounce, and it's easier to make friends with me as well. And uh, so, as you see from the PowerPoint I'm from the OECD, just a very brief introduction of what the OECD is about. It's a Somebody call it a think tank, but we call it an international forum uh, composed of 35 uh, member countries. Uh, and then it provides a forum, a place for different uh, um, policy makers, uh, academic, and experts in the field to exchange uh, good practices and to inform policy making. And one of the things um, um, some of you must have uh, heard is uh, PISA, which uh, we do a lot of uh, data collection. Uh, at uh, our country members, as well as our partner countries and economies. And so, as uh, I said before, um, the OECD is pretty good at uh, talking with ministries, or to ministers or policy makers. And um, so what really interesting for me today is that how we can learn to talk to uh, people on the front line who are really um, um, working on, on a subject, especially that I'm from the Director for Education and Skills, that uh, our main purpose is not to just to serve the ministries of education, but also to find out teachers and educators and how we can use data to empower them. And so uh, PISA, maybe some of you have heard of it, is P, uh, the Program for International Student Assessment that uh, we, it takes place every three years and we collect uh, information from more than 70 countries. And then we do policy comparison of the performance of each education system and all the data is online, uh, all the reports are online, that people can uh, take a look at it uh, easily. But the problem is that it doesn't really go to the school level, that uh, schools uh, are not very familiar with data and use of data for uh, school improvement. And this is why uh, we have created a new project called Be Piece of Based Test for Schools, that we implemented test directly at individual school level, meaning that schools now have their own internationally comparable data uh, to inform their policy, uh, school level policy. And we think that it's not enough just to give teachers and educators data. That we also created last year a pilot study, which I will go into detail right now, is uh, like an online platform that we connect educators from all over the world. Uh, in the pilot that we um, chatted uh, 6,000 teachers, educators, or policy makers from 172 countries to work together uh, in, in a group as a project to come up with some um, teaching resources that are now available for all teachers in the world. So, um, what is PISA? Um, you see, uh, in 2015, more than half a million students from seven, uh, more than 70 countries uh, took the test, but because we use a random sampling uh, representative uh, model, that actually those uh, half a million students represented more than 28 million students. And it is a test of two hours. And it's not just a traditional test, uh, it's not like one plus one is equal to, it's not just that. But it is the ability of students who apply the knowledge. And so it's not just the, uh, the performance in the test itself, but we also connect information of the social economic background of students, uh, teaching and learning environment at school, not just uh, the student, but also teachers, uh, parents, and school leaders. So um, based on the same model that uh, PISA is working at the, uh, in the country level, that is randomly sample, uh, random sampling schools at the country level, uh, my project, PISA pay, based at for schools, we work with schools directly. So instead of talking to ministries, we talk to individual schools and provide them with data. Um, so after taking the test, what we got? Uh, you would get uh, a report, huge, and um, 150 pages. And we have no time to go through all the detail, but I will give you some um, highlight of what you can expect from the report or what teachers and school leaders can learn from the report. Um, you can have the individual school results in reading mathematics and science, which are internationally comparable. Basically, for example, my school in Paris can compare my school to Tokyo, to, to Hong Kong, or to France as a whole. Uh, oops. Pass it one person. And so, as I said before, it allows you to do global comparison. 
It also allows you to do school level comparison with your own country. For example, in this figure, you can see all the schools which took part in PISA 2015 in the United States. And then also you can know more about the learning and teaching environment at your own school. So it is not just a report card of how well you perform in reading, mathematics, and science, but also the, um, uh, the discipline climate in the school, um, teacher-student relationship, how motivated are students, the reading strategy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, in the X uh, axis, you can see the SCS stands for the social economic status of the school. Um, the more to the so it's left hand side, uh, it means that it, the schools are more advantaged. And to the other side, it means less advantaged. So you can see, again, all the schools in the U USA in 2015, which took part in PISA. And here is the regression line. And then, for example, a uh, uh, school which took the test in 2015. And then, again, in 2016, then you can see there is a slight improvement. Again, 15. And so you see improvement again, and one more school. So um, when you, after you get the data, um, we, what we care is not how well we perform, but the equity and the, in, and the room for improvement. As you can see here, for example, for, for this school in 2015 and move, um, I can see it. Okay, the green dot, sorry. The green dot from 15 to 16, you can see that it moves above the regression line, meaning that from performing below expected to above expected. So what have to, what has the school done to, to, for, for such improvement? Of course, from, by, by looking at the data, we don't know. This is exactly the reason why we created such an online platform to connect school leaders together so that we provide a place for them to talk. So measure means uh, taking the assessment. And after, after that, you get the, um, the report and you ex start to explore your, your own result. And after that, you, you act. How many things you can talk to your teachers from a, a, like an expert group within your, 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 your school to talk about it. And one thing that I want to highlight here is that uh, we offer, as a project, we offer an international peer learning uh, opportunity for uh, school improvement. What is it? Uh, it is a pilot uh, with an external organization that we, uh, we did it last year. It's called PISA for You. As the name suggests that it is PISA, but it's for you because we see the need to democratize PISA data. Well, it is online public, everyone can see it, but it is not uh, um, in the way that uh, people start talking about it at, uh, in front line at a school level. So we want to connect educators around the globe that uh, we, which we did. And we want to crowdsource teaching resources, making, um, you, you know, connecting all the bright blinds uh, in the world to, to come up with uh, solutions for some common challenges all over the world in the classroom. And we want to empower educators from a bottom-up approach instead of going from ministries to schools. So what it is about, um, um, it is, um, so for example, uh, you, you go on the, the, the platform, to, which is a website, and you subscribe to it. And according to your profile, for example, where you're from, which uh, language you speak, and which uh, um, uh, education level uh, you are teaching at. And then we have an algorithm to match you with other teachers all around the world, because we are talking internationally, so we have to take it into account of the language, we have to take it into account of the time zone, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, once you are on a group, uh, on a web website, you uh, assign to your group. And so um, you start um, talking to uh, with your group mates of what challenges you have. So uh, on the website, we have library. We provide a lot of uh, um, resources, like such as videos, uh, books, and we also have mentors to help uh, groups to define their own challenge. So once they have their challenge uh, identified, um, they will um, um, start to kind of conceptualize uh, what their challenges is about. 
And after that, they will work together um, to come up with a solution. Solution itself is not enough, and they will implement it in their own classroom, and then um, they will evaluate their own um, um, solution. So you see that we, each team has support from, from mentors uh, who are experienced uh, educators. And uh, it's not only about uh, um, um, that, and also um, teach them how to use certain functions on, on, the, um, on the platform. So uh, it's a three to four month program. Um, last year in October, we um, through peer review that we selected uh, two teams. Uh, we invited them to come over Paris and presented their teaching resources with us and share them with us. It is really international. Uh, for example, one team uh, consists of a teacher from Colombia, a teacher from the Dominican Republic, and a teacher from the States. And the other one, a teacher from Colombia as well, again, and uh, from Romania, and then from, uh, from the States. So uh, it's truly international, which is uh, interesting. Um, sorry, for us is to uh, what we have learned, right? So in order to find out what we have learned, we uh, did an evaluation, but it is more on the user-based uh, uh, evaluation. It's like, for example, um, how many um, people finish the whole program and number of participants, completion rate, and we also do um, like a focus group to, to see what they think about it and in order to achieve a continuous improvement. So what, what have we learned from it? Uh, some facts. Uh, some facts again. So, 6,000 registered participants from 172 countries, and uh, finally, 1,500 actively engaged in it and finished the whole program. So, it was really a surprise for 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 myself as well when I first started planning the, the whole program with our partner. Our idea was to have two ideal ideally 2,000 people registered, and then lucky enough, we have 20%, 30% people finish, but it was really. Uh, went beyond our expectation. So you have also some com complications on the resources that we already planned for, um, but finally we solved this uh, problem. And we have uh, 100 teaching resources produced. It, it covers from teaching mathematics to teaching uh, STEM, um, to um, increasing motivation from students and all sorts of things. And mo most importantly is that all these resources are free to use by other teachers. Everyone, everyone here right now can log on the website, register, and you can see all the resources. For us, it is very important because uh, we believe in public good, and we all believe that uh, all resources should be shared and, uh, to, to teachers who need, it, uh, need them the most. So who were the participants? As you can see, 81% uh, uh, were teachers, 8% were school administrator, and 2% uh, government uh, official, and other like some other like uh, students, uh, journalists, and uh, in academia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can see overwhelmingly they are they are teachers. And then we could also see a lot of uh, communication happening among uh, participants. Uh, 4,300 posts uh, on the forum. And then almost uh, 40,000 comments and messages exchanged uh, among themselves. So what have you learned from this exercise? Is that we learned there's a significant demand for international connection and professional development, which is very interesting for us because uh, when we look at different uh, so-called teaching professional development, it's mainly uh, on learning something new about your subject matter or how to manage a classroom, but it is like more on a local and domestic contest. Um, like such an international contest for like collaboration with other teachers was not very popular or was not very much offered by, uh, by universities or by governments. So we found it quite interesting that there was a huge demand for that. And people really enjoyed uh, working with teachers from other uh, uh, countries. And they, because when they first started, they, they have some doubt. Come on, we have like from, from very different contexts, we have very different education systems, so the, the problems cannot be the same. But after that, uh, we, the feedback we got back from them was like, actually we, f we are facing the same challenges. So it really comes to the second uh, um, um, lesson that we learned is that um, for the pilot, the, ling uh, the lingua franca was English. And then we, 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 find, we found that it may not be, the, be very ideal and to, to reach all the teachers who need them. 
uh, the, this kind of uh, professional development and international connection. That, uh, for example, the teacher from uh, Colombia said that uh, uh, he tried to promote this platform to his fellow uh, colleagues, but that not many of his colleagues could do such a project in, in English. So uh, we are planning to do uh, um, in different languages, but we found that there's in terms of technological problem, there's some problem that we have to solve. And then we observed digital divide. Uh, I think it's a, in a uh, presenter before said that um, the very interesting case in Africa, the people um, the, the embedded, right, face embedded in it, that we found that in some countries, uh, teachers were using their cell phone directly. They were not using computer to finish, uh, to complete uh, the whole program. So we have to think about what to do to satisfy the, these needs. So I think I have like four minutes left, and this is the last slide. So um, again, so we, we did a pilot. Um, we found a lot of interesting things, and it also provoked a lot of questions because what we learned so far is more on a user perspective, user-based research, but we don't know anything about the impact. Uh, we have no, uh, because it was not part of the pilot to find out the impact. So uh, we would do at least uh, a plan to do at least three more rounds. Um, so these are questions that um, I'm trying to, to, to answer and to find, to blow your, um, uh, your brains as well, is what would be the impact for different user type? Um, because overwhelmingly, the last in the pilot, like most of them were teachers, so we didn't know much about the needs and desire from teachers, uh, from school leaders, policymakers, uh, parents, students, and journalists. So we may not be able to cater for their needs, and how can we find out their needs? What can we find? Uh, what are the channels? And the second thing is uh, we produce a lot of teaching resources, and how can we evaluate the impact of those resources in, in, in the school classroom? And how can we make sure that uh, we can spread uh, disseminate those resources to other teachers who were not part of the platform? And, and more importantly is that, uh, is there any real impact in terms of performance, in terms of student engagement at school level? And how can we, what kind of information we can collect from the platform, from like uh, the behaviors of those users to come up with some meaningful uh, policy level um, um, discussion. And so more research has to be done, for example, the trend of discussion uh, on the platform. What are the topics that most uh, interest our teachers? And what are the different behaviors of each uh, user type? For example, uh, does it mean that the policymakers are more concerned with the management or teachers more uh, concerned with the subject matter? I mean, what are the behaviors of, of, uh, of each user type? And the pattern of communication, how they, com how they communicate within, uh, among each other, and how they use the resources produced after the program. And again, it's the impact of it um, that we are very uh, interested in, in knowing. And then the, the, the last question that I, I'm asking myself, I hope to find more inspiration from you guys uh, later on, is well, how can we define success? for such a platform and how we can measure success. Uh, is it success the same for different users? Is it success for the same from the OECD perspective, from the teacher's perspective? What's the voice success? So um, it is the uh, why I'm here. I look forward to discussing with you further uh, in the cocktail or in the Q&A um, section. Thank you.